Hi, it's uh, 30th of June, so obviously by Saturday things change in the UK and uh, we've got uh, cafes and and pubs and people will be allowed to camp and go to their caravan so things will change but at the moment the Lake District is very very quiet. At the moment we're at Newby Bridge, uh, we've just been doing things at my mum's house so while we were going past, we thought we'd uh, just uh, um, do a quick uh, video here. Uh, and Newby Bridge, this is uh, the halt which you can't go to the, for the lakeside and have a day, Epithwaite Railway, uh, which is a pres preserved railway, steam railway. I don't know when they start again, uh, by the looks of it, probably not this weekend. You'll have to check on their website. And I don't think uh, the Ravenglass and Estelle Railway, which is uh, um, what do you call it, um, a preserved railway line in Cumbria um, they're not opening this weekend either but there are a few that I have actually noticed more down south that actually are opening because some of them have got like old coaches and they used to have individual compartments um, so some preserved railways are finding it easier to do than others and some of them have got smaller coaches that you can have individually so it's going to be different for all the preserved railways which ones can actually carefully open at the moment and which can't but I'm not an expert on this so a lot of that is just assumptions from being a bit of a railway nerd but uh, hopefully in a, in a couple of weeks time we can have a ride on this it'll be really really nice um, I've uh, been tuning into my radio again today that. I've been listening to my radio again today. And I've got um, I bought a little shortwave radio, um, and I've been looking. I've been a uh, pirate hunting today. You do get pirate radio stations on shortwave. There's a, f a few from the UK, a few from Ireland, quite a lot from Holland. So I've been lo looking for Radio Merlin today. And I think I got it earlier this afternoon. Um, yeah, but it's great to take a shortwave radio when you're walking around because you get the signal very clear. You don't get it clear in your house these days because there's so much interference. Even your central uh, heating will interfere with shortwave and like the plugs on your computer. So at the moment, I've, I think I've got, I'm sure it's a pirate and, it, and it, from how strong it is, I think it'll be from Holland. And I'll show you a little trick here how to get things louder. Uh, dead easy trick. See that, if I do this, you can, you can get a better signal by doing this, if you're in, a, in the countryside. Find a metal fence and this should boom in there. <clears throat> so it kind of uses the aerial as a signal now obviously shortwave in the day it can be quite stable but at, at night it starts zooming in and out quite fast or fading in and out or quite fast however you see it um, and shortwave signals can be quite funny because FM basically goes so far and then it stops generally uh, where shortwave can you can hear it for certain certain from a certain area then it totally disappears jumps an area and then comes back into a different area so this station could be really really clear 20 miles down the road and 20 miles road down the road after you couldn't hear it again but 20 miles after that you could hear it clear again that's a simple explanation i'm sure that um 
um, professionals will pull me up on that but that's just a simple explanation for people that don't know hell of a lot because if you get into to too much you'll be here forever <laughs> I've just found a, a station on six, no, no, 7290, which is definitely Irish and it, it is religious and uh, they're talking about potatoes. <laughs> This is a Swan Hotel in Spa, so um, I'm not, I don't know if they're opening this weekend, but uh, it's a really nice spot. If you want a little walk like we've done around here, and hopefully the Swan will be open by then, it's quite easy to get to. I've just seen there's a bus from Kendall to Newby Bridge every hour till about half past ten and then going back the last one the last one back at ten past eleven so it's quite good uh, or you just follow the A590 from Kendall and turn right, turn right where it says Lakeside Hawks Head and you get to the bridge there and uh, you can do the same thing that we've just done and over here I've just seen that uh, We've got an advertisement for Granger District Photographic Society and what's on. And that's where we're going next. As I said, we'll just drop off at Grange over Sands while we're on our way back to uh, Lancaster. Um, and this is the duck ponds in Grange over Sands. Grange is a nice place to visit and you can actually do it probably in about one hour's 40 minutes from Manchester Piccadilly on train so it doesn't take that long and that's direct as well or sometimes you, you, you change at Lancaster but there are, there are direct trains you can, de can get. Um, so this is a lovely park and as it says here don't feed the ducks bread because it's basically junk food so if you are going to feed the ducks in any way make sure you bring seed and stuff like that I don't know the history of this but here is the Picklewood Spring which is a natural spring and uh, 10 years ago when I was back uh, coming back from the sands late at night probably about midnight I fell into that and bust my chin open <laughs> wasn't a nice experience <laughs>
the one thing I always like about uh, the railways here, well, this is the it's called the furnace line. It goes all the way up to Carlisle, so it goes through, it goes to Barrow, then it goes to Whitehaven, Maryport, ends in Carlisle. Is the the furnace line from Lancaster all the way up to Carlisle still uses uh, the old seven four railway signals? So it's not like a a traffic light you'd have on the road. It's it's still the the old arms that go up and down to tell you if it's safe or not. Before we drove home and it started to get a bit dark, we thought we'd just find one of the semaphore signals close up. Um, this is outside the Commodore in uh, Grange in the plant centre. Um, and I think there's two signals, one's yellow and one's red. One's, one's called a home signal and one's called a distant signal and um, if you want to find out the, what these different ones do you can find that out online and I think if it's facing up that means the uh, line ahead is clear. Well, apparently, the railway created Grange, apparently. Uh, John Bergen, who lived on Home Island, which is a little island over there, laid out ornamental gardens and lake and what had been a swampy cut off from the sea. The first promenade alongside the railway overlooking the gardens was created and Grange was suddenly promoted as a gentle resort on the shore of Morecambe Bay. That was 18, 18, 1875. Thanks for watching my channel again and remember to like and subscribe.